Hi, this is Congressman Tom Cole from the 4th District of Oklahoma, and this is another one of our weekly chats about what's uh, happening in Congress. No question this week in Congress, the main focus uh, in the House of Representatives was impeachment. Uh, the Democrats uh, introduced and adopted the process uh, whereby they'll actually go about impeaching the, United, uh, the President of the United States of America. I was probably more intimately involved in this than normal because that process has to move through the Rules Committee where I serve as the ranking Republican. Uh, there's a lot of differences between what uh, we're doing where President Trump is concerned and what was the case in the past with President Nixon and President Clinton. Uh, in both the uh, Nixon and the Clinton impeachments, the process was agreed to and negotiated by both sides. In other words, they each came to a common agreement and that legitimized the process. Uh, that didn't happen here. Uh, in this case, the uh, Democrats sought no Republican input, absolutely no negotiation. We didn't even have a hearing to go over the resolution so questions could be asked. Uh, it was written probably primarily in the Speaker's office. Uh, Republicans were given 24 hours notice uh, of it and then uh, it went to the Rules Committee where I'm the ranking member. Uh, for what's called a markup. In other words, Republicans could present amendments to uh, the resolution package. In all, we presented 17 different amendments uh, to the package. Not a single one was accepted. Uh, everyone failed on a straight party line, nine to four vote. Uh, that's unfortunate. Some of these were really pretty easy amendments to uh, uh, adopt uh, and, uh, and should have been, frankly. Um, others, probably more controversial from a Democratic standpoint, but clearly the order had been given. Uh, look, we don't want a single word in this process changed. When people tell you the process is fair, it's not. Uh, again, it wasn't a negotiated process. In the past, in the Nixon and Clinton years, uh, there was only one committee, the Judiciary Committee, that pursued impeachment. In this case, there's about almost half a dozen, I think five different committees involved in the impeachment process. The president only gets a, uh, a uh, representative in one, that is in the Judiciary Committee, which is the final stop, so to speak. But the primary committee so far that's been pushing impeachment is actually the Intelligence Committee. There, the president has no lawyer, no ability to cross-examine, no ability to call witnesses, no ability to offer other evidence. And there certainly are some Republicans there, but they can't do very much without the permission of the Democratic chairman. They can ask questions, but any witness that comes, the, chair, the, uh, the Democratic chairman would have to agree to. On subpoena power, again, the minority can issue subpoenas, but once again, the chairman has to agree to those subpoenas. So uh, it's a pretty one-sided process, to say the least. And you saw that reflected uh, when the, the uh, resolution was actually adopted on Thursday. It was a straight party line vote. Not a single Republican endorsed this process. That's pretty unusual in a caucus that tends to be pretty fractious and sometimes divided. And by the same token, on the Democratic side, there were only two defections. And uh, not surprisingly, both of those individuals came from districts uh, that President Trump car carried. Um, I think you have to look at this in two ways. Obviously, we'll go through uh, the process. I don't think there's much question in anybody's mind here that that Democratic House will vote to impeach a Republican president. Then it moves over to the Senate. There'll be a trial there. And uh, I don't think there's a lot of question that a Republican Senate is not likely in this case to uh, convict a Republican and remove a Republican president of the United States, particularly on something as flimsy as this, a single phone call where we have disputes over what was said, where people listening in drew different conclusions, uh, where we're told there was a quid pro quo, that is no aid unless uh, investigations are begun against the president's po domestic political opponents. Uh, for those who argue that case, they have to explain, well, why did the aid eventually get there, which it did, and yet there were no investigations. So there was a quid pro quo. It certainly wasn't a successful one. So you look at how murky that is uh, to plunge the country into a debate over impeachment uh, on something this flimsy is terrible. Uh, quite frankly, uh, it will stall other important legislation where the two sides could agree. Uh, the American people aren't going to be well served by this. Uh, and I think we're going, this is being pursued largely for political purposes. Since uh, everybody, I think, in the Senate and in the House knows this is unlikely to result in the removal of the president, I think uh, the people that are pushing it simply want to damage him politically uh, in terms of uh, being able to run for re-election. Um, that's pretty, uh, pretty sorry politics, in my view, uh, when it uh, uh, puts the nation's uh, 
normal business at risk. So uh, I, I, you know, think this is a really reckless, uh, reckless effort. If you remember at the very beginning, Speaker Pelosi said, I'm not going to pursue impeachment unless there's significant Republican support for it and significant consensus among the general public. Uh, neither of those things exist. Again, as you saw, not a single Republican vote to pursue impeachment. I think the Senate will be equally unified. More importantly, the American people are sharply divided. I've, I've looked at a lot of polls of this, and it's about 50-50 uh, uh, between people that actually tends to be sort of mid-40s and mid-40s, people that want him impeached, people that don't want him impeached. Uh, that's no way to remove a president, particularly when you're 13 months, less than 13 much. We're actually 12 months and a week away from the next election where the American people, who appropriately should hear all this, I don't have any problem with investigations, hearings, discussions, release of transcripts, all that's good. Uh, but I do have a problem when we're focused on something that we can't resolve at the expense of things that we can. We haven't had a vote, yes, on the USMCA, the great trade deal with uh, Mexico uh, and uh, Canada. We haven't had a vote on our defense authorization. We're running under what's called a continuing resolution. That denies billions of dollars uh, to our troops. Uh, it denies them uh, the weapons and the support that they need. Uh, there's a lot of things Congress can agree on. We actually have uh, some bipartisan agreement on drug bill, none of that uh, drug pricing bill. None of that stuff is moving forward right now. So the more you consume the country over impeachment, the less likely you are to do productive things where you can actually work together for the American people. So I regret this exercise. I regret uh, the people that plunged us into it. I think it's a big political mistake, not in terms of elections, but in terms of getting things done for the American people, which is what every member uh, is elected to do. So obviously we'll be talking about this more in the future, much more than I would like. Uh, but I think, uh, again, it's likely that the Democratic House will vote to impeach. It's likely that it will go uh, then to, it certainly would then go to the United States Senate. Uh, if that happens, uh, I think it's extraordinarily unlikely that uh, there would be a, a conviction or a removal. Given that, I'm left to wonder why in the world are we pursuing this exercise when there are so many important things that we could get done that would make a difference in the lives of average Americans.